In 1790, a shadow hung over the gallows as Thomas Byrd, the first individual to face federal execution under the U.S. Constitution, approached his ultimate doom. His tale was but the beginning of a morbid procession that included the infamous likes of Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, and Eileen Warnos, just to name a few. The echoes of those final words, those bizarre confessions, and desperate declarations of innocent at the brink of death continue to stir intrigue and dread. Brace yourselves to hear some of the most famous last words of executed inmates. Clarence Ray Allen in the chilling confines of California's Folsom Prison, a tale of vengeance and death unfolded that had fit seamlessly into a spine-tingling thriller. The story starred Clarence Ray Allen, already serving a life sentence for a 1974 murder. But the cold-blooded twist came when Allen, from within his prison walls, ordered the assassinations of eight witnesses who had testified against him. Three were mercilessly eliminated, their assassin apprehended with Allen's vengeful list in hand. This chilling act sealed Allen's fate, and at 76, he became the second oldest convict to meet his end on the executioner's table in three decades. His final utterance, my last words will be, Hoka hey, it's a good day to die, he said. Thank you very much, I love you all, goodbye. William Bonin in the chilling final years of the 1970s and dawn of the 80s, Southern California was gripped by fear. Its freeways, symbols of freedom and progress, were tainted by the heinous acts of William Bonin, dubbed the Freeway Killer. Accused and convicted for the brutal murders of 14 young boys and men, with whispers of countless more horrific crimes, his reign of terror ended only with his death by lethal injection on February 23rd, 1996. His unsettling last words echoed through San Quentin State Prison, a chilling recommendation for those considering serious crime. I would suggest that when a person has a thought of doing anything serious against the law, that before they did that, they should go to a quiet place and think about it seriously. A stark contrast to the nightmarish frenzy of his own gruesome acts. George Bernard Harris In the high-stakes underworld of Kansas City, March 11, 1989, was a day of triumph for George Bernard Harris. Emerging victorious from a cutthroat craps game, Harris, flush with victory, procured two machine guns, entrusting them to an accomplice for safekeeping. But the game's thrills descended into tragedy when the entrusted guns disappeared, vanishing into the night. Driven by fury and betrayal, Harris retaliated in the only language he knew, violence taking the life of the unfortunate intermediary with the cold precision of a revolver. Yet, the hands of justice were swift. Captured during a robbery, Harris was charged and convicted for his crimes, culminating in his execution on September 13, 2000. His parting words? Somebody needs to kill my trial attorney. Ted Bundy, a name that would become synonymous with malevolence, he was a predator who hunted in the shadows of society. His crimes, a chilling array of murders, rape, kidnappings, were committed with such relentless cunning that the true count of his victims remains concealed by the fog of terror he cast. Condemned for the brutal slaying of two Florida State University sorority sisters and a 12-year-old girl, he was to face the final retribution for his sins. These horrific acts followed his audacious escapes from jail twice in Colorado, where he was initially detained for the murder of a nurse in 1975. Even as the specter of death loomed, Bundy confessed to an astonishing 30 homicides across seven states between 1974 and 1978, although estimates suggest his heinous tally might exceed a hundred lives snuffed out prematurely. His last night on earth was a discord of sobbing and prayers. At dawn on January 24, 1989, bound to the merciless grip of Florida's electric chair, he was asked for his final words. Addressing his lawyer, Jim Coleman and Fred Lawrence, the Methodist minister who shared his last prayer, he requested, Jim and Fred, I'd like you to give my love to my family and friends. Watch exciting free crime documentaries every week? Subscribe to our channel now and strangle that bell icon to be notified of new updates. Eileen Warnos, a forsaken woman, made her living in the shadows. As a sex worker on Florida's lonely roads, Warnos claimed her actions were only in self-defense, 
but her relentless shooting spree in 1989 and 1990 resulted in the death of several men, convicting her in six of these horrifying murders and spiraling her onto the state's death row. Her existence, shrouded in darkness, was punctuated by her final cryptic words on October 9, 2002, moments before the lethal injection seized her life. She invoked visions of Hollywood blockbusters, prophesying an apocalyptic return. I'd just like to say that I'm sailing with The Rock, and I'll be back, like Independence Day, with Jesus, June 6th, like the movie, Big Mothership and all, I'll be back. Labeled as America's first female serial killer, in her final act, Warnos dismissed her attorney, abandoned all appeals, and willingly embraced her impending doom. John Wayne Gacy Hidden beneath his facade of a jovial clown named Pogo, infamous as the killer clown, John unleashed a reign of terror in Chicago. Between 1972 and 1978, he cold-heartedly snuffed out the lives of at least 33 teen boys and young men, their final moments spent in his suburban Norwood Park abode. The majority of his victims were strangled, their bodies buried in the space beneath Gacy's house, a gruesome graveyard. For 12 of these ghastly murders, he was sentenced to death. On May 10, 1994, Gacy met his end via lethal injection. Yet, his brazen audacity endured till his final moments, his last words punctuating his monstrous legacy, kiss my ass. Wesley Allen Dodd Dodd's horrific story unfolded with multiple arrests and mandated therapy for child molestation convictions, but matters got worse when he pleaded guilty to the chilling sexual assault and murder of two young brothers and a subsequent abduction and murder of a four-year-old boy. On January 5, 1993, Dodd was led to the gallows, marking the first legal hanging in the U.S. in 28 years. His refusal to appeal his case, coupled with his specific request for execution by hanging, added a chilling finality to his story. His haunting last words ring in the annals of criminal infamy. I was once asked by somebody, I don't remember who, if there was any way sex offenders could be stopped. I said no, I was wrong. Kimberly McCarthy In a seemingly harmless request for sugar, Kimberly McCarthy gained entry into her 71-year-old neighbor's home in Lancaster, Texas in 1997. In reality, this was the beginning of a sinister plot to fuel her crack cocaine addiction. Unleashing a brutal assault, McCarthy stabbed her unsuspecting neighbor, stealing not just belongings, but the very life of the elderly woman. Accusations of two other similar slayings haunted her, though trials never materialized. On June 26, 2013, the cold steel of a lethal injection extinguished her life, marking the 500th execution in modern Texas. Her parting words, laden with conviction. This is not a loss. This is a win. You know where I am going. I'm going home to be with Jesus. Keep the faith. I love y'all. Thank you, chaplain. Jack Jones Jr. In the harrowing winter of 95, Jack Jones Jr., a figure carved from the nightmares of the town's sleep, darkened the doors of a tax office. There, the unsuspecting Mary Phillips and her 11-year-old angel Lacey fell prey to his wicked plot. As Lacey's light was snuffed out, Mary's life was horrifically extinguished. At the grisly scene, the hush of death was broken. Lacey's eyes fluttered open, reflecting the flash of the investigator's camera, a startling miracle in the depths of horror. The court sealed Joan's fate with a needle, condemning him to the cold embrace of death on April 24, 2017. His final words hung in the air like a chilling fog. I hope over time you can learn who I really am, and I'm not a monster. There was a reason why those things happened that day. I'm so sorry, Lacey. Try to understand I love you like a child. Rosendo Rodriguez III In the haunting year of 2004, Rosendo Rodriguez III orchestrated a dance of death within the quiet town of San Antonio. A sweet 16 became a grim tombstone, her life cruelly snuffed out, her remains hidden in an unassuming piece of luggage, discarded in the city's forgotten landfill. A chilling pattern emerged when, a year later, a 29-year-old woman suffered the same ghastly fate. The haunting thread of his misdeeds wove through five additional assault cases, creating a grim tapestry of terror. On March 27, 2018, 
Texas's icy needle delivered final justice. His last words echoed in the sterile chamber. I have fought the good fight. I have run the good race. Warden, I'm ready to join my father. Let us know in the comments what your last words would be. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.